Good afternoon, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, if I may have your attention, please. Thank you. You can have a seat. I think there are enough seats in the room, which is relatively big. So I would like, uh, on behalf of the organization of this conference, to welcome all participants to this very important event, in particular for our organizations. Uh, there is a very strong interest in this conference, a, a, an interest that, despite the fact many of you have participated in several previous ones, you continue coming. And uh, this time we have achieved more than 450 on-site registrations, uh, which means physical presence, as well as 100 participants are expected to follow remotely. Um, and we also have 16 parallel sessions. We believe that these numbers clearly testify the continuous support to this conference and the interest uh, of the community, of the research community, and not only to the results from road transport research activities, which are funded at EU level. I have to uh, acknowledge the strong involvement, the support of the three European Commission services in this conference and in these activities that include DGRTD, Research, DigiMove, and CINEA. And it is, of course, our pleasure to welcome representatives of these uh, um, Commission services in the panel right next to me. This year, we have uh, decided that a few innovations, small innovations, will accompany the conference and will provide the smooth, uh, transient transition, I should say, from Horizon 2020 to Horizon Europe. Let me uh, name them, or at least try to name them. First of all, you have noticed that we have renamed the conference. So the H2020 has been removed from the name. And this is a clear indication that we are uh, discussing about Aurora Transport Research uh, uh, results activities at European level and hence the name RTR alone without the reference to, to Horizon 2020. The second, I would say equally obvious uh, difference is the fact that uh, the conference now is spread over three calen calendar days. It lasts two days, but over three days this hopefully gives a lot of time or sufficient time for all of you to network, to get to know each other, to discuss and to exchange. A very important, in my view at least, uh, uh, new addition is a special session that is entitled Stakeholders Experiences of Successful Interaction in the Integration of Research and Innovation Activities. This session is at the end of tomorrow and it is a session where three AirTrack, EGVIA 420 and SICAM Association Med members will give their experience from a continuous uh, involvement in a large number of research projects at European level and how this research has benefited their own um, uh, associations and their own companies. We believe that this is a step towards connecting really what Europe funds to the real results. Uh, 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 small things, uh, a, f a few small things. Uh, first of all, you should please tweet using the conference hashtag, which appears everywhere. Uh, let me remind you that all the presentations of the conference will be uh, available after the conference and uh, all the sessions recorded, they will be available on the YouTube. So please take your time uh, to uh, revisit them if necessary and to have discussions even more in depth. Um, therefore, I would like to invite at this point on the stage the first speakers of the day. And I would like to start with uh, Dr. Stefan Neugebauer, Director, Global Research Cooperation at BMW, and also AirTrack Chairman and EGVIA 20 Chair as well. So Stefan, thank you for <laughs> opening. Thank you very much, uh, Sissis. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the AirTruck Board and on behalf of the Board of the EGIA 420 Association uh, and with our colleagues from the SECAM Partnership, it's really our pleasure to welcome you 
uh, to this uh, conference. At the beginning, I have to apologize if I cannot uh, recognize you in a proper way. I broke my glasses this morning. So uh, <laughs> uh, sometimes it's a little bit hard for me, but I can hear you and I can also talk uh, with you. So um, we are really happy to have this uh, conference. We started around seven years ago. Uh, we had a discussion at the air truck board where we said, oh, is there anybody who has really a complete overview of what's going on in the European research arena for road transport? And then we said, no, we don't think that there's really a complete overview. It's so hard to get it. And then he said, let's make a conference each year where all the European projects are dealing with road transport or around road transport can share their results. And this was the first birthday of the Road Transport Results Conference. And we are very happy that our board member in AirTruck, Professor Sissi Samaras, he took over immediately and together with uh, Lucy Boimel, our director from 2Zero, she said, we will do it. And uh, Sissi and Lucy, you really created, I think, a fixed point in uh, our research community, an annual fixed point with this conference. And this was, or this could be done, because we became, from the very beginning, the support from the European, uh, European Commission. So thank you for this. And we appreciate that many, many um, partners from the European Commission are joining this conference. And please allow me to give a very specific Welcome on behalf of you all to Rosalinde van der Vlies, to Thorsten Klimpe, Klimke, to Philippe Frosoir, and to the new acting director from Cinea, Paloma Abergrotte. Please give a very warm welcome. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, today we will. Um, hopefully get a lot of results from um, the projects from Horizon 2020. We are now in the transition phase in this conference towards uh, Horizon Europe projects, and we will see a lot of um, results from the partnerships, from calls related to the partnerships, but also beyond from the a research program which was also strongly influenced from the working group from the technology platform from AirTruck. So all these things are coming together and uh, we try more and more to get a system approach. And this is what we had in mind from the very beginning in all our discussions in AirTruck, the system approach, and this was also uh, continued by the setup of the partnerships uh, like uh, to zero. So we are in close collaboration, um, the partnerships. We are for sure to zero partnership in close cooperation with the SIPCAM partnership, with the batteries partnership, with the hydrogen uh, Europe pa partnership, with the KDT, the key digital technologies, which is getting more and more important for our sector. And uh, we are very happy that um, by an initiative of our vice chair of uh, Jean-Luc de Paula Galloni, uh, now we did an additional step in the collaboration between the um, road sector and the key digital technologies um, for research. This could be done by collaborative or joint calls. Um, and it is absolutely important because we all know that the electronic sector will have a strong influence on our targets for defossilization and digitalization of uh, road transport. And we all know the problems with the shortages in chips, with the critical raw materials, with the supply chain. So Europe needs to become more and more independent from this. And we need this technology because we do not have another option to solve our problems in transport, to do the next step for the defossilization of transport, for the digitalization of transport. Uh, there is no other option than innovation. 
Because if we do not have an innovation, we will stay where we are, and that's not good enough. Or we can make a restriction by regulation. But this is not a good plan, because then our society will not be competitive in the world. So there is no option than innovation, and therefore it's really a pleasure to have you as really the active um, researchers and innovators in Europe here in this conference. Thank you so much, and I give back the floor to our chair of the conference, to Sissis. Thank you, Stefan, very much for this inspiring first talk, actually, and strong. Uh, let me now invite to, to, to the podium uh, Mrs. Magrit van Schendel. Schendel. Sorry, Magrit. <laughs> I hope I tried my best. Um, Magrit was kind enough to step in for Christian Scharnhorst, who was um, uh, originally, originally invited, but uh, he couldn't be with us today because of other commitments at Bosch. So, Magrit, thank you for coming. Well, thank you, Sisis, and uh, thank you also, uh, Stefan, for your uh, nice, engaging kickoff already today. Um, I'm happy to be here, not only as session moderator later on this afternoon, but also as member of the executive board of the SECAM partnership, stepping in for Christian, as you said, and also uh, for some others. So I'm happy to be here. And I was happy to hear some of the things that uh, Stefan also said about uh, the technologies that we need, the innovation and the drive that we need there. And it brings also one of the themes that I wanted to discuss with you. As 2023 is the year of skills, European year of skills. And we need that, of course, to come to innovations. In Europe, about 10 million people are working in transport and mobility. And the green and digital transitions are opening up new opportunities for people and for the European economy. But how to make that happen? Having the relevant skills empowers people to successfully navigate the labor market changes and to fully engage in society and its developments. In road transport, so far dominated by mechanical engineers, other engineers as well, but mechanical engineers are I like them, I'm one too, but anyway. <clears throat> we need also more and more digital skills, working with artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, big data, or maybe better smart data. I think this is, has already been obvious for many of the OEMs and the supply chain, but you see it's also emerging and taking place at road operators, widening their scope beyond the hardware, also creating digital departments where new people or the current staff trained new skills is dealing with data collection and analysis and the steps afterwards. And of course, we should not forget about traffic planners, fleet managers, city authorities, and so on and so on. So we need to really invest in skills and training to master transport's digital and sustainable twin transition. But then how to what we here are, how can R and I help in spotting trends in making the right decisions and creating jobs that we really need in the future? Well, I think anticipating the possible scenarios for the future of work does really require a considerable amount of research by different disciplines. Think of humanities, social sciences, natural sciences, but also thematic fields and, and also different stakeholders like workers, employers, researchers, and policymakers in joint attempts. In the CCAMP field, we have some findings for, uh, from Horizon 2020 projects on the socioeconomic impacts, but we are still missing the clear picture. Anticipation and mitigation of impacts and rebounds effects of jobs and skills upscaling, which we hope to discover thanks to one of the CCAMP 2023 topics and projects addressing that, of course. So from our side, the CCAM partnership side, we also have something else to work on. Social engagement, societal engagement is a challenge. I don't think that's new to you, it is. And it's so hard for us to really get that going. Bringing science closer to citizens 
can be done, for instance, through co-creation processes. And we really want to make this happen in our Tree Partite work program topic, drafted together with the city's mission to zero and CCAM. This topic's scope includes to, uh, includes to support cities in their acceleration in transitioning to climate neutrality. And it's not an easy task as citizens, the, the logistics sector, delivery stakeholders, urban planners, transport operators, technology providers, we all have to work together and exploit the combined potentials of electric, automated and connected vehicles for both passenger transport and goods transport has to be done in planning and in actions and really making it happen. So this requires a mutual understanding and alignment of the needs identified by users and by cities striving for the city's mission target on climate neutrality on one hand and on the opportunities of existing and emerging technologies in CCAM and in 2 on the other hand. And it is a huge challenge. Co-creation processes will be increasingly relevant for the CCAM partnership in the next phases when planning large-scale demonstrations. Well, and while speaking about next stages or next phases, the CCAM partnership is now updated its strategic research and innovation agenda, the SRIA. The midterm of Horizon Europe at Reachers program and of the CCAM partnership is approaching two work programs 21, 22, 23, 24, have been published and we have only three remaining years. This is really the right moment to take a step back and reflect on recent developments in Europe and beyond and to really look at major technology advancements, new emerging challenges or evolving societal needs. Take them into a board in our strategic research innovation agenda. This agenda provides the strategic framework for preparing future activities within the partnership and with our partners. This update is organized in full openness, involving from the beginning of this year the members of the partnership. But of course, full openness goes beyond the members of the partnership. So in May at the UCAT conference here in Brussels, we'll open up also the public consultation to allow others to join into this process, so you're all welcome. If you're a member of the partnership, not yet or not, welcome to help us in draft our strategic agenda. But this year at the conference here, at the RTR conference, as we are underlining road transport research results, it's still much focused on Horizon 2020 project, but not solely. The Horizon Europe projects start to appear, and I'm quite eager to see results of that, also for the SECAM projects here. So this year, you can also meet the new project coordinators at the EC stand back in the other side. So I hope you use the opportunity to do so. So I wish the speakers and the participants here um, a very successful conference. I hope it may be inspiring to you and lead also to good feedback to the EC colleagues. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Margriet. Actually, when you talked about mechanical engineers, uh, <laughs> uh, there is this perception, I think, mechanical engineers something, I don't know, uh, full of oil, lubricating oil somewhere underneath or, you know, something. Uh, but mechanical engineer, engineers, I think, can be very good modelers, can be digital, everything, right? So you are a mechanical engineer, right? So uh, after that, I would like to invite Rosalinde van der Vlies Director General, uh, Clean Planet, DG Research and Innovation, <laughs> Clean, <laughs> to, to give us a, a short talk. Thank you, Rosalinde. <laughs> so, good afternoon, everybody. It's a great pleasure for me to be here with you on this very sunny day in Brussels. And I have to start by also saying that I have a similar problem like Stefan because I forgot my reading glasses. So I would like to apologize to my colleagues who prepared an amazing briefing for me. If I'm not following everything, it's simply because uh, you know, I have problem reading uh, what, you, what you prepared for me. So this is just by, by way of, uh, of starting. So I think today is a wonderful day, uh, you know, a new uh, sixth edition uh, of the RTR conference 
and a great opportunity indeed to share and disseminate uh, the amazing results uh, from our research projects in the transport sector. Uh, and I think we can you know, modestly say uh, that this has become a flagship event uh, to which the whole community uh, is looking forward to. Uh, and in order to support this statement, who has been looking forward to this? Let's just see here by raise of hands. Okay, don't be shy, don't be shy. Yes, you have been looking forward to this. Uh, I mean, this is really a great opportunity. Oh, thank you. Also, the lady in the back has been looking forward to this day. I think this is really a really great moment, you know, not only to share the results uh, of the projects, but of course also to network, to meet new people. And I'm also very happy to, uh, to learn that also the new project coordinators from Horizon Europe projects are here today. So I think this is really a very, very great event. So big thank you also uh, to our partners in the 2.0 partnership, the SICAM partnership, and AirTrack, of course, uh, for organizing uh, this, uh, this flagship uh, event. Now, I don't need to convince all of you, and this is wonderful why I like being you know, in this kind of audience, because I think you will all agree with me that research and innovation is definitely crucial in order to deliver on our political objectives of the European Green Deal. But in the end, what we want to do is basically to save the planet uh, for our ch children, our grandchildren, and the generations that will come uh, afterwards. And therefore, I think it is really important that we have this conference so we can share the results and the experiences we had with this project. But I also have a request to you here today is to go beyond you know, sharing and exchanging with this community, but also please share the success stories beyond the community with your family members, you know, when you are in the supermarket. I think it is really very important that we also reach out to the general public because what we really need in this moment of time is to give hope. We are facing so many societal challenges and again, I'm sure you will all agree with me that research and innovation is here also to give hope to the future you know, of our planet and to our societies. So please help us. I think we have social media accounts here, uh, but let's spread the message. You know, if you are proud of some project results, if you hear, you know, project results today that you hear, wow, this is really cool. I didn't know this was going on. You know, share it also, you know, in your day-to-day -day life, because I think this is really very important. So what we are doing from the European Commission side, as you know, we are, of course, together with you, investing in solutions for research and innovation. We have a strategic policy framework, which is the European Green Deal. We have the smart sustainable mobility strategy with specific targets that are basically, you know, guiding us all the way up to 2030, where we want to have at least 30 million zero emission vehicles on the European roads. We are also preparing the legislative framework to make sure that also the legal framework is there to support all this zero emission uh, transition in the transport sector. So I think, you know, we have a great uh, framework in place. What I think is very important, I think sometimes there is still, you know, a misconception of what actually research deliver. Uh, and I think we are all, uh, again, in agreement, it goes beyond the mere technological solutions. This is also about social innovation, societal engagements, skills development, uh, as Margritio also uh, mentioned rightly. And in the end, ultimately, this is also for the competitiveness of our European industry. And I think this is really a very important issue to underline, uh, that what we want to achieve is not only sustainable solutions that will be brought to the market, we also want to make sure that the society that we have in the European Union is fair, inclusive, affordable, and I think to all these issues, research and innovation projects have a very important contribution to make. And finally, also, of course, we need to keep in mind, you know, the competitiveness. And again, research and innovation can help to make solutions more cost efficient and more uh, affordable. So I think we have great opportunities ahead when it comes to the research and innovation activities. Um, as you know, we have cluster five uh, of the Horizon Europe program, which in total has 15 billion euros uh, to invest. Uh, we have now launched over 60 projects in Horizon Europe. And again, I think this is a great opportunity also during uh, the one and a half, two days or three days even, I forgot now. You're here, yeah, no, two days spread over three uh, to really connect, you know, yeah, I got it right. Uh, sorry, it was correct in my briefing, by the way, uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, 
Um, so there, you know, to have an opportunity, you know, already experienced project coordinators from, you know, projects from Horizon uh, 2020 to connect, you know, with the new ones uh, from Horizon Europe and to really make sure that we get the most out of the projects that we are together working on. Because it is true that we need to accelerate. We have no time to waste. And in order to accelerate, I think it is very important, and now I need to apologize to Stefan, because Stefan hears me quite often uh, these days, and uh, I always say the same things, and Stefan was a bit complaining to me, like, oh my God, again with you in a panel, and you're going to work. Okay, I am going to do it, mentioning the word that is very close to my heart, that I think is really necessary to accelerate, and this is to find synergies. Synergies between the different activities that we are doing. And I think that, you know, the partnerships that are represented here today in the road transport area for research and innovation are really showing the way of how synergies should be done between the different partnerships of Horizon Europe. And I would really like to congratulate, in particular, the 2.0 partnership, the SECAM partnership, uh, and the city's mission uh, for coming together uh, and having really, you know, joining forces to also address, you know, the society uh, challenges and societal engagement issues in the in the transport sector I think this is a very very good example of how we can accelerate faster together uh, with more impact but we also need to find more synergies between the work that we are doing in Horizon Europe and the other investment programs uh, of the European Commission uh, for example the connecting Europe facilities because of course we can only be successful if we also have the right framework the right infrastructures in place uh, so I think also also there uh, a lot is going on but we can do even more in order to find more linkages between the different uh, EU funding programs. And finally, we are also looking uh, at the future. Magrit already mentioned uh, the review of the strategic research and innovation agenda. A great opportunity. I think you know, we are already absolutely on the right track. Uh, but I would like to mention four issues uh, which I think uh, could deserve a bit more attention for the remaining three years uh, that we have. The first one is linked to the societal dimension. This is really the affordability of the solutions. I think it's very, very important. Uh, to look into this and to contribute to this uh, for our European society. The second one is linked to circularity and recyclability. This is an issue that is very high on the political agenda of the European Commission. And in one month from now, the European Commission will present uh, a new legal package that will look into the critical material dependency that we have in the European Union. And it will also look at how we can accelerate net zero industries in the European Union. So I think, you know, also uh, in the road transport area, it is very important to look into issues of circularity and recyclability in the broader political context of our critical material dependency. The third one, Magritte, thank you for making such an amazing case for this. It was also uh, on my list, skills. Uh, and of course, this fits very nicely, and it is not by coincidence that this year we have a European Year of Skills. So I think also here um, a great contribution is already being made, uh, but also for the remaining three years, I think we can make a great contribution to the skills agenda as well. And lastly, sorry Stefan, it's again the S word, synergies. So I will conclude uh, here. Let me just uh, congratulate all of you for the results and the amazing energy that you have been brought uh, to the RNI road transport sector. Uh, I wish you a wonderful event with great networking opportunities. Today is the day of love. Um, so I would invite all of you, <laughs> spread your love in this RNI road transport community. Uh, and I mean love, you know, in, in, in a very friendly way, of course. Uh, so share your results, share your experiences, uh, and have a really wonderful three days ahead of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rosalinda. Thank you for this. Um field of love inspiring actually talk. Thank you very much for this. And uh, I think it's time to move to the second very important DG that underpins our activities and is very much related, DG uh, MOVE. So I would like to welcome Torsten Klimke, head of, uh, of UNIT, Innovation and Research in DG Mobility and Transport at the European Commission. Torsten.
Thank you, thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, and uh, thanks very much for the invitation. How can I possibly follow up after this, uh, Rosalinde? Um, maybe I, I'll, I'll try to at least pick up your, your S word, your synergies word. Um, um, synergies, how do we find synergies? Um, space also starts with S. And many of you are involved in, a, or, or uh, at least have seen already, um, a topic, a joint topic, a mission, CCIM uh, 2 zero, um, to work together on something. So if it happens in the same space, there is probably something where you can look for synergies. Space is also something where we see more and more in urban mobility, which is another file that, that I'm responsible for in DigiMove, um, that actually um, this is becoming what we need to look uh, at in the future, the space. What are we doing in our space? It's occupied often by cars, sometimes by bikes at the same time. Where do people walk? Where do they use micro-mobility? Where can they access the train? Where can they store their bike? It's actually quite difficult to park your bike out here. Um, I don't know whether others of you uh, try to, to park the bike. And um, luckily I still have my glasses here. I'm, I'm, getting worried. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting worried now. I'm not sure I know where my spare pair of glasses is at home. So if I lose them now, this seems to be the trend, then... <laughs> um, so um, uh, it's, 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 it's great to, to be able to uh, discuss with you um, research results. Um, Rosalina has said everything already. I can only agree, and, and we in DG Move agree on the importance of, of research, on the need to follow up. Um, and on the need to finance, but also to have um, other framework conditions, so the regulatory framework conditions. And, and that's an area that we are working on, of course, in DG Move, and where maybe we can all together improve a bit the, the links between the research and, and um, regulatory initiatives. And there's a bit of a time lag. Huh? I mean, we know this from the research community, uh, and sometimes maybe it helps to, to explain it and to, to explain it several times to, um, to colleagues whether it's in member states or in other parts of the industry or in other parts of the commission, um, that there's a certain time lag, which doesn't mean that, that research is less important. It just means you have to think a little bit kind of ahead. Huh? So what's coming out in three to five years. So I want to share with you a little bit something you might already know uh, and what is coming up in, in, in legislation. Huh? So and when you take into account the, um, the, the cycles that also are needed to negotiate these files, maybe something that you are just ready now with and that you're presenting over the next um, two days, two days, three days, two days in three days. Um, maybe there's something where you get, ah, that really would fit in there. Huh? You know, maybe I should kind of talk to someone who's actually working on this piece of legislation or who will work on this piece of legislation. Um, so kind of two, two areas or three areas rather, um, the, the green uh, decarbonization, um, but also the digital, no? digital for new services, but also for efficiencies. No? So we have the two parts, and you know it uh, much better than me. Um, so replace the um, fossil fuels by cleaner fuels, but also use less fuels in total, no? save energy. Um, so what's ongoing and, and uh, near the, the finishing line is the alternative fuels infrastructure regulation more ambitious than the framework we currently have from 2014. It can probably be even more, it could probably be more ambitious even in the future. And it could have been maybe even more ambitious now. Um, that's a chance to kind of show also the results um, where we can actually go in all of this on decarbonization and um, um, to kind of push a bit, um, maybe sometimes also um, those at, at member state level um, that you're in contact with to maybe be a bit more ambitious in, 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 in where we're heading. Um, we see it with the ITFS directive revision uh, and an important aspect on the, on the NAPS, NAPCOR, NAPCOR. Maybe, more, maybe many of you know what it is, maybe some don't. I uh, had to read it up recently as well. The national access points, so the data. Huh? How do we share data? Who has the data at member state level? Um, Yes, there are of course also competition issues and, and uh, other issues, but we need to make more progress on this to, to share data, because if we don't share the data, if we don't have the access, then we can't make the innovation happen that we would like to. Um, safety, of course. Safety is something that sometimes we, well, we don't forget about it, but uh, um, what maybe we forget is 
um, when, you, when you add up the numbers uh, all over Europe, um, then you come to um, 19, in, in 2021, uh, so two years ago, 19,800 people died in Europe on the roads. Mm -hmm. 19, 20,000 people died, not in a war, on the roads. Um, so we need to do more on, on, on safety and there will be a road safety package um, um, in, a, in a couple of weeks. Uh, with two parts that might be of interest also to you uh, and, 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 and some, some links to, to what you're doing. Um, the revision of the driving license directive and the revision of the directive on cross-border exchange of information on road safety related traffic offenses. So a bit also the exchange of data on, on, on road transport. And we see it in other modes. If you, if you take aviation or other modes, everything there is reported, recorded, examined and um, lessons are drawn. We are lacking this a little bit uh, on the, in, in, in the road sector. We, I don't think we have an overview of who of these, of these nearly 20,000 people, what, how did they die, what happened, what can uh, in, in all cases be uh, made better. Um, greening freight package is coming uh, in the second quarter of this year. And there um, of interest to you uh, could probably be the uh, Count Emissions EU uh, initiative, that's a harmonized framework for greenhouse gas emissions accounting in passenger transport, but even more in logistics. Huh? So to make it more transparent, um, what kind of greenhouse gas emissions are actually emitted? Huh? So when you when you look at the uh, the logistic chains, um, and further furthermore, the uh, 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 much uh, anticipated and and waited for revision of the weights and dimensions directive, and the combined transport directive. Um, then going a bit back to the sharing of data and digital, digital um, um, aspects, so the delegated regulation on MMTIS, uh, so the revision of the delegated regulation on multimodal travel information services, um, that's planned for, for June of this year um, to enhance the access to real-time data. And then new initiative uh, on multimodal digital mobility services, uh, the MDMS um, where workshops, some of you might have participated to these, to these, um, uh, to some workshops, and the adoption of that is planned for for June. So that's upcoming. Uh, so, and if you think that you have something in your research results uh, that is relevant, uh, please don't hesitate also to contact me. Uh, I'm happy to to make the link. Um, and last but not least, um, I see that I should come to the end here. Yeah. <laughs> um, coming back to what what also Rosalinde said. The users. Hmm? So what are we actually doing all of this for? Technology and solutions. Solutions for, for users, for people and for businesses. So that's important. Huh? So to make the link um, and um, show how the research results can help and maybe also anticipate. Huh? You know what, uh, what is coming now in the pipeline and maybe you have even ideas from your research. What kind of regulation, what kind of rules, standards could make sense in the future. Please do contact us. Thank you very much and sorry for being so long. Thank you, Thorsten. Thank you very much. Um, last but not least in the row, uh, in the sequence of our speakers, distinguished uh, speakers, Paloma Ava Garote. Uh, Paloma is acting director at the European Climate, Environment and Infrastructure Executive uh, Agency. Please join me here. Thank you, Paloma. Uh, the well-known Cinea, actually, to all of us who is dealing and taking care of our projects. Well, um, thank you very much. And thank you to the European Partnerships um, for having organized this conference and to which I'm happily joined today. Well, I'm very glad to have the chance to address many beneficiaries and interested partners of the Horizon programs and have the opportunity to take a stock of what we have been achieving together, thanks to your projects. Well, as the executive agency implementing the European Green Deal, greening road transport is at the heart of the work of CINEA. As this sector can bring a major contribution to the reduction of CO2 emissions in the European Union. Although many of you are very familiar with our research and innovation programs, I would like to recall 
a couple of facts and figures of what we have jointly achieved. For example, you know, through the Horizon 2020 and Horizon Europe programs, CINEA has been supporting more than 600 projects with a total budget of nearly 4 billion euros in funding in the area of transport. In particular, the three co-program European partnerships play an important role as they cover majority of road research budget in Horizon Europe. And I would like to thank them for their essential contribution to road research. We are also financing projects within the city's mission, with funding available to transport to support sustainable and safe urban mobility, including public transport and active modes like walking and cycling. And we all have to be very proud of what these projects have achieved, because they can change the life of our European citizens. For instance, we have projects helping to increase user acceptance and take up of the electric vehicles, either by deploying a new generation of vehicles, achieving long distance trips, with minimizing charging time, or by reducing the cost of battery cells for the production of next generation batteries, which will help to make electric vehicles cheaper. And now I come with the famous word synergies that Rosalind likes very much. So in fact, we have seen from these examples that research and innovation projects are delivering promising results. But we need also to ensure that deployment, exploitation, and take up of your results so the impact of your projects and the European Union support is maximized. So this is where CINEA can help. It is our role to promote synergies between the various programs that we are managing so that you can find further avenues to fund your projects. For instance, with the Connecting Europe facility, with LIFE, or with the Innovation Fund program. For example, when your projects funded by Horizon achieve a sufficient technology readiness level, then the Connecting Euro facility can act as a follow-up as deployment instruments. As an example, we have a project under the Connecting Euro facility which is developing and supporting a zero emission service network for public transport in Warsaw. It will deploy a bus fleet together with building fast charging pantograph stations and will feature 70 charging stations with 140 charging points in total. Similar opportunities we can find in the LIFE program. This is a program with 4.7 billion euros where some calls within the climate change mitigation actions aim at supporting the shift to zero emission mobility, for example, by deployment of fast and super fast recharging points or reduction of energy intensity of transport. Finally, the Innovation Fund, 17.5 billion euros. It's a program that can also act as follow-up for your projects. For example, in the area of electric vehicles charging and hydrogen power mobility. Therefore, I would like to encourage all of you to look at the research and innovation funding ecosystem in a more holistic way. Designing your research projects in a way of taking them to the next phase, where CINEA and the European Commission is willing to support you as well. But to do this, we need to work hands in hands. And you can count on the agency and in the European Commission to provide assistance to your projects. Today is therefore a good opportunity to exchange and share knowledge with your, link, your similar projects. But also, 
I will hope that this will be an opportunity to meet my colleagues of the agency of the European Commission so we can further discuss on all these aspects, including synergies. So I'm really looking forward to today's interesting discussions, and I hope that this will inspire you to continue your efforts to make European Union road transport greener. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you, Paloma. Thank you very much. I have a bad news. The, company, the, the conference already started eight, should have started eight minutes ago. We are a bit late. I would like to invite you really to, um, first of all, those who want to, to follow the session on batteries of the future to move to the Newton Room. Those who want to uh, uh, listen to the talks on building an inclusive and interconnected transport system, stay here. So thank you very much once more for all, this, all the speakers. And let's try to catch up some of the, of the time we have lost in between. Thank you.